We've been working with Brendan for the last two days. We've been really lucky to have him here at our conference. And uh, he's going to tell us all about uh, his sort of flip learning journey in a primary setting. The title I love is called Birth, Crawl, Walk. So thanks very much, Brendan. Thank you. My contact details are all up on the top of the screen. Um, I'm across all of them because, yeah, why not, uh, basically. Um, so to get, give you a bit of an idea of where I've come from with my flipped journey adventure, I really dislike the term journey. It's just, it's so overdone. Um, so I like to think of it as an adventure because it really is. Uh, my first exposure to flipped learning was during my internship. Um, I was lucky, lucky enough to be placed in a composite year five, six class. Um, and the teacher at that point in time was uh, doing in flipping where he was using Khan Academy videos um, that he was pushing it to the students via iTunes U, which is Apple's um, LMS platform. And then they were using Mathletics. Uh, it was an amazing uh, experience. And from what he explained to me, I had enough of an idea to get the basics. Um, <laughs> but not really enough to know to actually go and then do it myself um, in a classroom on my own. My next exposure was when I attended the Future Schools Conference last year. Um, I decided that I would attend the masterclass with John Bergman as well. Um, that was an amazing, an amazing day. Kind of like this, but uh, these two days being the one day. Um, so my brain was a little bit, whew, how you going? Um, the link there is to a series of articles that I've written as you know, reflections on those days, including the masterclass. So if you're interested in hearing from what John Bergman has to say, um, that might be useful for you. Following on from that, my first um, teaching gig, I picked up a temp contract um, at my current school, and they have, shall we say, a mature population uh, in the teaching staff. And given that I was the youngest, or one of the youngest I consider now, I was constantly being asked, do you have five minutes? I just need some help with this. I've tried this, but it's not working. Can you come and help me? I tried to put together an afternoon uh, where we could all come together and I could walk through a couple of things. And it, it just doesn't work in terms of timing to get everybody there, um, your parent meetings, bus duties, all that kind of stuff. So I decided, well, you know what, I know enough about flipped learning. We use the central platform, which I imagine most people are familiar with. I can record some flips, teacher professional learning videos, push them to YouTube, push them to my blog, which that's where everything of mine ends up on my blog at some point, and I can then share the link to that article with that video onto the central platform. So anybody in the school would access it whenever they want. And I had some really good feedback. One teacher in particular, um, 15 years teaching experience, grown woman, she said to me, I love that nobody knows how many times I've paused the video or rewatched it. This is a grown woman with 15 years experience. So you extrapolate that back to a 10 year old. And then they, do they will probably be having something similar in terms of this experience. Um, following on from that, I picked up a three term uh, temp block as an RFF teacher. Um, and I was asked to teach fundamental computer and tech skills across the school K to six, uh, each class once a week, which is great for continuity. And it didn't work. Um, YouTube was blocked because it's a really useful resource and why the teacher want access to a useful resource. So I thought that's all right, I've got uh, Google Drive. I can push my videos to that, share the folder to the students. That didn't work either. Um, trying to get 25, 26, 27 kids watching the one video or even pushing it out early so they had time to download it. It just wasn't working at that point in time. In that context, it didn't work. So I thought, too hard at this point. I'm a first year out teacher, so I'm trying to manage all of this other learning how to be me as a teacher, finding my teaching identity. I thought, it's too hard. I keep doing the Flips TPL videos because they're working and they're working fantastically, but I put the class flipping on the back burner. It just wasn't working, I needed to focus on actually finding my thing as a teacher. So, my next exposure was FlipCon, which is where I met Jeremy and Heather, um, and a number of other educators. It was, as Jeremy and Heather have both said, an amazing experience to be in the same place with two or 300 
like-minded people who are all there wanting to know more about how to use this process, about different tools that are available and how it's working in different contexts. Um, that link is to my review articles from that conference. Um, I'm, I tend to be verbose when I write, um, just a word of one. Um, so that brings us up to date to this year. So this year I've got a job share contract. I'm three days a week in a year five and six, um, year five, six class. We've got, we're probably middle SES in terms of our demographic, but I've got a number of students who don't have access to the internet at home. Um, our area is actually quite a dead spot. Um, so I've got five or six kids that literally cannot get internet at home, so that doesn't work. The school has a bank of 16 Lenovo laptops, which are just the stock standard DOE laptop, and they're all missing at least one key. Um, the B button seems to be the most popular one. Um, so it's not the greatest environment to try and flip. So I'm still doing the, um, the flip to TPL videos. I tend to push those out on a Monday afternoon. Um, but I decided I want to do fit. I know it works, I know that I can do it, but how's it going to work for me in my context? So I decided to tackle what I felt was the easiest option, um, rather than go with the hardest option, which Heather said she'd go with if she was to redo it. I'll go with the easiest option. We all, kids know how the spelling test works. Friday morning you rock in, you do your spelling test, you mark it, and off you go. We do it slightly differently in our class. Um, my view is that there's no point practicing this with 20 words all week. <coughs> get to Friday, you get 19 correct. Hey, well done. You could spell seven of them, uh, 17 of them correctly at the start of the week. So we do a pre-test on Monday morning. So over the weekend, I record a video where I just pump out the words, say the word, read it in a sentence, say it again, and just push that through. The differentiation is that the kids just press pause. So the ones that are really quick and on the ball, they keep going. If I've got a few students with some auditory difficulties, they press pause and they rewind and they listen to it again and then press pause while they actually write the word. So I've got about 10 kids in the class with devices. They do that on their own um, and then they move into the next activity. After that, they know what that is. It's a set routine in our room. The rest of the class, we do it the old fashioned way where I say they, you know, they write it and you move on. I'm finding that the students who are doing the spelling pretest in the flipped mode are finishing that entire process, marking, rewriting out their spelling that, uh, their list for the week. They're finishing that about five to ten minutes before the rest of the class. Might not sound like much, but over the course of a year, you've gained back a whole day, which there's a lot you can do in a whole day, and the students know what they need to be going on with in the next steps. The kids are loving it. They love that they can pause and rewind me if they need to, and they love pausing me when I'm in the middle of saying a word and they catch me with a funny face. So you get, you get some giggles when you first start doing it, um, particularly with 10, 11 year olds. With your seniors too. With your seniors too, so it's, we're not immune to it at the top end. I've just started the process of training my students um, with some inflicting with mathematics. Now, as Jeremy's alluded to, you don't just say, here's some videos, off you go. You, you do need to train them. So with my students, what we're doing at the moment is I'm curating videos. I'm not creating at this point in time. And I'm sitting at the front, they all come and sit on the floor. We watch the video, I'll pause it at certain points, and we'll have a conversation about the concepts. We'll talk about some questions that the students have and clear up any misconceptions as we go. This is getting them used to the concept of pausing the video, of thinking about what they're hearing, of taking some notes, of asking questions of the person next to them or of mum and dad or me or whoever's available. And to that, getting them used to it. So the next step from this is I'll start creating my own videos and they will then go through this process on their own in the classroom to get them used to doing this on their own without me there to pause and press play. And then the next step from that is then they take them home. We've been at this for, what are we in now, week five? Week four of term, week four or five, something like that. So we've been at this now for about uh, four or five weeks since the start of this term. And I envision that there's probably going to be another four or five weeks of this. Um, I've got some students you know, with learning difficulties and they do need that extra support. I want to make sure this works right. So I feel it's worth investing the time at the start to build that foundation up.